now, a special program in living color on NBC. I guess you're asking yourselves why I came down those stairs, walked across these boards, ambled past these props, these theater trunks cluttered with memories of a thousand opening nights, and crossed down to these footlights, sat on this old stool in front of this time-honored proscenium. I guess you're asking yourself, what does that have to do with tonight's show? Well, I'll tell you, nothing. <laughs> Absolutely nothing. It's just that I've always wanted to have an entrance like that. It's my show. <laughs> wow. Now, I'll tell you what tonight's show is about. It's about ladies. We've got uh, eight ladies, each with a great sense of humor. Not only that, but some of them have Terrific getaways, sensational roundouts, and fantastic lungs. <laughs> Everybody knows that the <clears throat> first thing that I'm attracted to in a woman is her sense of humor. Now, that's the biggie with me. That's the most important single thing in a woman. Of course, it wouldn't hurt if she had terrific getaways, sensational roundouts, and fantastic lungs. <laughs> Eight ladies and me. I know what you're thinking out there. You're thinking he's on a little ego trip. Well, you're wrong. I'm on a big ego trip. <laughs> I admit it. Men have egos, especially actors have egos. But I figure if I'm honest about it, people will appreciate that honesty. Because if you take away my ego, what have you got? Just an ordinary guy who's the idol of millions. <laughs> Speaking of idols, George Maharis did a... That one killed me. <laughs> Speaking of idols, uh, George Maharis did a, uh, a nude centerfold in Playgirl magazine, standing next to a horse. Talk about ego. <laughs> I'm only kidding. Tonight we're gonna have fun. <laughs> We're not gonna talk about Watergate and the price of meat, and gas, the energy crisis. The energy crisis, it's really getting rough, you know. Everybody's trying to conserve energy. The other day I went to a massage parlor. The girl only used one hand. <laughs> now we're gonna... ah. And we're not gonna do those kind of jokes. We're gonna have fun. Tonight we're gonna play it fast and loose. Whatever the ladies want to do, that's what we're going to do. Because we're not on late enough to do what I want to do. <laughs> now, let me see. Who are the ladies? Oh, yeah. First, there's uh, Carol, um, Nancy, uh, Nanette, uh, JP, Bernadette, uh, Joanne, <laughs> and uh, Della. And Joyce. Yep. Oh. The Burt Reynolds Late Show. Special guest star, 
Carol Burnett, Nancy Dussault, Nanette Fabre, J.P. Morgan, Bernadette Peters, Joanne Blue, Della Reese, Joyce Van Patten, and starring Oh Twinkle Toes himself, Bert Reynolds. I guess it's uh, not any secret that I've had a thing for this uh, lady ever since I first saw her on television. And uh, I've, I've met a lot of biggies in the showbiz, and I have to tell you that one of the biggest thrills I've ever had in my life is knowing Carol Burnett. <laughs> This is going to be kind of a different uh, kind of a show than you've usually done, and, and uh, yeah, I could I, tell that. You could tell that, can't uh -huh. you? And uh, I, I don't want to. I want to get into some questions that you probably haven't, because you've been on every talk show in the world, you know, and, and answered all the questions. So I want to ask you something that usually people don't ask you. Yeah. Do you remember your first date? My first date? Mm-hmm. I didn't date that much, if you can believe it. I, um, <laughs> I was really very athletic in school, which should have helped in the dates, but it didn't. I, uh, uh, no, I didn't date that much. I remember going, uh, one time a fellow asked me to go to a movie, right. and I was about 13, 14 years old. I said, all right, and I met him in front of the Egyptian here in Hollywood, and he'd already paid and gone in. <laughs> so I paid and went in. Mm. And I bought my own candy, and we sat about four seats apart. So that was my first date. That was it, huh? Honest engine. Excuse me. No. Oh. <laughs> uh, if you were, if you were uh, offered a picture uh, with uh, me, for mm -hmm. example, oh. why not? Because sure. I'm here. If there was a nude scene in it, uh, would you would you do it? Hmm? Uh, I don't have that many hands. <laughs> no way. I would, sh I would show my back, but then what the hell, I should show my front, it looks the same. <laughs> When you... No, I don't, I don't think. If it's done artistically, I would. Yeah, that's what I said. Uh, Was that is... your body? No. Didn't no, think no. So. Howard Hughes. Howard Hughes. <laughs> what, what's the first thing that you, you notice about a man? Sense of humor. Really? Yes. And the second thing? Uh, the look in the eyes combined with the teeth. <laughs> Took care of that. <laughs> What's what? Uh, you think that that's uh, the sexiest thing? His yes. eyes. Yes. Uh, uh, sense of humor, and eyes and smile. Mm. Mm hmm. And and if he uh, if a guy uh, made it out and out just you know pass at you, uh, how would you handle that now? Now? Now. I'd laugh. Laugh. Or faint. <laughs> that's the best way to. Uh, no, you know, one time I was living in New York and I was not married and uh, I uh, got up uh, late at night. I couldn't sleep. It was a Saturday night. And I thought, well, I'll get all the Sunday papers and I'll come home and I'll read all of them and that'll put me to sleep. You know, the New York Times and the Mirror and the... Mm. So, okay. So I put on an old pair of Levi's and a raincoat and I went up to Lexington and 57th Street, well-lit street, I'm loaded down with newspapers, and I'm walking back. It's only three blocks from where I'd lived. Mm. Now, a man was coming towards me, and I passed him, and I knew he'd stopped, and had turned around and was following me. And I started to get a little scared. It's late at night. Now, I'm going down Lexington, and I'm, my heart's starting to go like this. And I said, 
good grief, a woman can't even go buy some newspapers without some pervert coming, you know, mm. and going to attack her or whatever. Now I have to go down 56th Street, which is very dark. Mm. I started to speed up. He started to speed up. I started to slow down. He kind of slowed down. Now I'm really scared. Get to the middle of the street where it's very dark. He caught up with me, and my back is to him. And he put his hand on my shoulder and he said, come here. I don't know what made me do it. I went, gotten some loony from, you know, yeah. from a band who had just gotten out. I let him have it. Don't ever go, oh, please, no, don't. They want that. Just go, Wah! And they go, take off. That's, you know, if somebody holds you up, go, Oklahoma, when they win. <laughs> Sing, do anything they don't expect. Yes. You want to do some improvisations? <sighs> When's the last time you did improvisations? When I was in college, two years ago. Two years ago, yes. <laughs> uh, you're, not, you're not afraid to do it. Mm-hmm. Why? Well, you, you never be... know what you're going to say. Well, I know, but that's what makes it so interesting. We'll bomb together. All right, we'll bomb together. Okay? Okay, okay I, I want to do a... This is a perfect setup. Right. The, uh... Mm, you grew, huh? Uh, yes. <laughs> There'll be, uh, two people on a first date who go in to see a triple uh, X-rated movie by mistake. Okay? It's our first date? Our first date, and we're, it's, we don't know what the movie Did is. Did you pay for the ticket? Yes. Okay. <laughs> okay. Mm. Oh. Boy, I hope this is a good one, don't you? I like movies a lot. I do, too. I'm a big movie buff. <laughs> Boy, that... Uh, that doesn't look like Pete and Tilly, does it? <laughs> Looks like Pete, but not Tilly. <laughs> you want popcorn? Uh, I, I, don't, I don't think I could... Uh, yeah, I could go for something. I could go for something. Well, I could go for something. I could go for something. Where are you going? <laughs> you see? I'll be, uh... Oh, I like that one. I'll be, uh... A census taker... Um... And, uh... The old lady that lives in the shoe. Okay? Am I the lady or the census taker? <laughs> Either one you like. I'm the old lady? Do you want to be okay. 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 What do you do, knock at the door? No. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, I'm, the, uh, I'm the census taker. Don't take bug her. me. I got so many children, I don't know what to do. <laughs> yeah, I heard that. Shut up! Go uh, ahead. Listen, I was wondering... Uh, Wait a minute, there's a man here. I was wondering, uh, I got the, this kind of a questionnaire here. Yeah. This is a funny-looking house. Got a lot of soul, though. What's so funny? <laughs> you know, we, uh, we have a saying in Fairyland. What's that? That, uh... <laughs> I don't see how it'd fit here. <laughs> if, uh, if you can fit this shoe, you can be my lover. Really? Uh-huh. Well, what the hell? I got a size 11 shoe, and this looks like a size 99. It's close enough. <laughs> Could give uh, a big thank you to Carol Burnett.
Oh, oh, please welcome the very long-legged, sensual, funny, pretty Joanne Fluke. Pull up a stool. Thank you. I mean, a, uh, a bench. Oh, we're from Florida. I know it. All the people down there in, what's the name of that town? I'm from Winter Park, Florida. Winter Park, yes. Near Winter Orlando, Park. where Disney World is. Where Disney World is, yes. Mm -hmm. Boy, we're plugging them up a storm. I know watch, it. watch over there, because here she is, one of your own. I'm from Florida myself. Where are you from, Bert? Large town called Jupiter. Oh, I know it well. Do you? Sure. Yeah, really? Sure. I love Jupiter, one of my faves. Let me ask you something, because it's a... <laughs> Uh, and it's not a, a put down by any manner of means, but when you were for quite a long time, what one would call a Hollywood starlet. I mean, in the quotes of Louis Max. Such a rude. I know it is. I know it is. Starlet. You should hear what they call me. What? I don't want to go into that. <laughs> but you, uh, it's your life has changed a lot mm -hmm. since then. Do you want to talk about that? Because I, I, I know it isn't exactly the funniest thing in the world, but I, I think it's. I think you're very special, and I think we should talk about it. You met a guy. I met a guy uh, a year ago as a result of a direct prayer to the Lord because I had just become a new Christian and I'd been baptized by Pat Boone in his pool. And when I came up after, out of the water, I felt like I had swallowed the whole sun and it was just like beaming forth. And it was the most fantastic, incredible experience I've ever had. And it's given me a new meaning and depth of something to rely on because when you, when you live and work out here, it's so fantastic, and you, be, you can become, as you know, so pushed and, and pulled by other people's values that you can find yourself kind of, kind of treading water, not knowing which way to go. And I was at this point, and I felt I was really kind of lost, and I'd lost my basic values, which I'd been raised with. And fortunately, uh, circumstances, because the Lord moves in very interesting ways, I ran into Shirley and Pat, who've been very good friends of mine, and we, we renewed our acquaintance. And they led me to the Lord, and I just have felt like a brand new person ever since. And I had, I'd prayed that I wanted a, a spirit-filled man to come into my life, and I'd had a blind date set up for about a year that David Ladd and I had done a picture in Spain together, and he'd done a picture with this fellow in Jamaica. And he said, I want you to um, go out with this fellow. He's from Kentucky, but he lives in Nashville, Tennessee. I said, I don't want to go out with some hillbilly hick. He said, no, Joanne, I think he's just perfect for you. So he reminded me, he said, now Friday night, I prayed, this was Thursday. Friday, he said, you're supposed to go out with us. And I said, anything. I was trying to think of a way to get out of it. My hairdresser said, where are you going to dinner? I said, this restaurant. He said, oh, it's very chic. He said, you never know who will see you there. And I said, okay, so I'll go. Good food. Hmm. So he came to pick me up. He thought he was going out with Sally Kellerman. <laughs> <laughs> He did, really? Yes, he did. It's the only person he remembered from MASH. Anyway, so we were having dinner, and David said, he's a Jesus freak. And I said, well, I am too. And we sat up till about 6 the next morning talking about the Lord and the Bible. And it's, it started a whole new relationship on a spiritual level. And, it's, and we got married in December. Well, I envy you. I really do. I think that's wonderful. <laughs> and this new time? Okay. Should be fun. Okay. I know what I want. I, I got one special I want to do with you. What? It's good. Well, on the back of these magazines, they have these dolls that you send away for, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. Okay. And uh, okay. you're one of those dolls, right? Are you that type, Bert? Well, I, I could be. Here we are. Well, there it is. Doggone, it is lifelike. I'll say that for it. See here. Wonder where you put the air in it. Oh, well, it's getting, getting better. Oh, yeah. Mmm. Oh, this is great dynamite. Not on your life. I loved it, I loved it. Oh, 
Yeah, well, you can't expect much for $9.95 on the back of the night. Uh, how about uh, two newlyweds in a, in a cab? Okay? Okay. On the way to the uh, honeymoon. Oh, oh. Mm, boy. Oh. Mm, boy. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Oh. In the traffic jam here, it's kind of... Mm, I can hardly believe we're Listen, finally uh, married, darling. Driver, mm. can you speed it up a little? Oh, darling. Right. Get over there. Mm. Okay, wait a minute. Mm. We're stuck oh, right here darling. in traffic. Darling, we're stuck in traffic here. Finally, you and me. You and finally, me. Us. Listen, finally married. I'll give you a hundred dollars if you get there to Roosevelt Hotel right now. I get a hundred and a half. Oh, boy. Oh, boy, oh, boy. Darling, it's hmm? you and me. You and me. For now and ever. Make it 200. Mm. Mm. I'll give you a 500 if you crack your mirror. <laughs> we'll be back with Bert and the girls right after this word. The lady that's about to come out. Oh, no. Well, she's not coming out. Uh, she flew in from New York just to do this show. She's a stewardess. Uh, now, you mention her name to uh, actors and critics in New York, and they go, uh huh, uh huh. She's marvelous. She was nominated for a Tony for a performance in a Broadway musical, Do Re Mi, and she replaced Mary Martin in The Sound of Music. Well, most of you out there in TV land know her as a gifted comedian on the Dick Van Dyke Show. What you might not know is that she's a fantastic singer and she's my friend. Welcome, Nancy DeSoto. Are you married? Am I married? Mm -hmm. <laughs> that won't give me a tough question. I know that's a tough question. <laughs> Hi, folks. I am. Uh, I'm not. I'm not really married. Oh, I got you. I've been <laughs> separated. No. Oh, yeah. Let me explain. Mm -hmm. uh, hello, America. Yes. In case you're wondering about me, I have been uh, separated for about four years. Separated for four years. Yes. I haven't told anyone yet. <laughs> well, you should tell the guy. No sense in meeting there. You know. I have been. <laughs> They know out in America now. They know in America. How about your... your Anyone your, is lonely. Is your mother there watching... Uh, guess what, Mom? Shh, I know. Schlitzville. Oh, don't tell <laughs> Now that you're uh, separated, now that you're single... Yes. Because you must be single ah! now. Yes, I you think so. You did have the bonds cut, didn't you? Sort of. It's not legal yet, huh? Not quite. We don't want to go into I that. I don't want to hear about it. It's anyway, so how do you handle people making a pass at you? Not well. No? Not well. <laughs> no, not well at all. I'm a late bloomer. I don't know how to handle situations. I got married young. Oh, yeah. 19. 19? Yes. Uh -huh. How about the facts of life? Did some, someone, uh, must be your husband, told you, I guess, huh? <laughs> uh, Finally, when I was about 15, now that's late, a girlfriend told me. A girlfriend told me? A girlfriend told me. And she went, da-da-da-da, of course you know, the da-da-da-da-da-da. Yeah. To which I responded, you've got to be kidding me. <laughs> I was totally stunned. I said, there's got to be another way. <laughs> I mean, kissing is wonderful. Doesn't that do it? Yeah. And then for weeks, when I went home, I stared at my mother and father. <laughs> yeah. Tell me, I think... Do you really? You don't... Uh... Yeah, that is a... That's oh, a big shock. I know. stared at them. You want to do some improvs? No. <laughs> well, we're going to do we're them gonna anyway. We're going to do some improvs. And I don't care. And be patient and loving. Okay. You ready? Oh, is this it? I mean, this is the way it starts? Sure, we just do them. That's, that's the way I like to do them. Oh, are you going to stand right up, the top sit down? Of No, sit right here. Do them. Do them. Gangbusters. Ready? <laughs> what do you want to do? Okay. I don't know. You want right. to do them? I'd, well, I'll just something. tell you a situation. I got Because I love this situation. I think I'm too old for this. That's all right. Uh, it's an adult bookstore. An adult bookstore? But you... But what you, do you mean by that? <laughs> oh, I'm in trouble already. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I would have you run the adult bookstore, and I'm an undercover cop coming to, you know, to check out the, the books and everything. Do I know you're a cop? No. I don't know anything. Uh, okay. I'm right. just the proprietress? Yes, right. Okay. Hello? Oh, hold it just a minute, please. Click. I'd like to have pictures of our customers. Hi. <laughs> oh, thank you. I feel like I've been set up somehow. <laughs> no. Uh, just, uh, 
Just walking along the street here, I noticed you got the word adult bookstore. That is correct, sir. Yes. Are you over 21? Yes, but I mean, uh, I would like to check out some of these titles here. Uh, oh, we have some good of them books seem here. Good a books. little. Well, I'm going to have to come clean, lady. I am. Careful. Oh, how well, attractive. <laughs> I always forget that damn thing. Well, well, listen. well, listen, I'm a cop. How do you explain all these magazines with the people with no clothes on? Oh, they're very attractive. I think you should read one. They're Rebecca of Sunnybrook Farm. My Friend Flicka. They're all these stories are in the magazine. My Friend Flicka. Yes. You remember that one? Not with that cover. <laughs> <laughs> oh, is that it? Oh, we were just rolling. I'll do a tourist, tourist guide in Indian. You're going to now do a tourist guide in Indian? No, you'll be a tourist guide and I'll be an Indian. Are we doing another one? No. I'm a tourist guide and you're an Indian. Mm -hmm. Where are we? In an elevator. Oh, in, <laughs> <laughs> in any particular building. I don't care where we are, any place you want to be. The dumbest question I ever heard. The Grand Canyon. The Grand Canyon? Okay, yeah. I'm a tourist guide. And here we are, ladies and gentlemen. We're at the Grand Canyon. Whee! Isn't it pretty? I thought you'd like it. And over here... Why, over here, ladies and gentlemen, we have a real live Indian. Hi there, sir. What's your name? My name is... My name is... My name is... And what does that... What does that mean? Well, I'm from India. Oh, you're from India? From India? Well, what do you think I'm from? Oh, you're not a... You're a... From that thing. Isn't that interesting, folks? I have... Why do you think... What do you think I'm in the all white theater with the turban on? I thought you were going to. I'm from India. I come near to the. Um, I come near to the to, 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 to canyon. Oh, you and, uh, speak well, to, too. Well, I isn't, told it, you. isn't it interesting, folks? I mean, you uh, thought you were going to see a. Run the. Uh, <laughs> run the. Uh, I run the. Uh, What's a dot in the middle of your forehead for? Dot in, a, in the middle of forehead means uh, that I've never, uh, never been with a woman. With a woman. Oh, it's very hard to speak. You've you never been. Ne oh, I've never sir. been. <laughs> It has to grow, it grows on you. <laughs> You've never been, never been with a woman? I've never been with a woman. I've never been, never, never, never been. Uh, dare I ask why? Hmm? Dare I ask why? Yes. Why? Because <laughs> I'm all wrapped in elephant skin. That's the saddest thing I ever heard. Yes. I've wandered all over the world to try to find somebody who has an elephant skin opener. <laughs> because if I don't get open soon, I'm going to burst. <laughs> Would you, uh, would you, uh, sing a song? One. <laughs> I will no, sing I didn't a want song. you to do a medley. No, I'll, I'll sing a song. Huh? I'll sing a song. I haven't sung a long time. I'll sing for you. I don't care how long it's been. Don't you want to hear a sing? Just sing.
I guess most people think of uh, Annette Fabre as a, a wonderful comedian, an actress, singer, and a dancer, and as a TV wife of uh, Sid Caesar, or most recently the star of a Broadway show called No Hard Feelings. But uh, for me personally, I, uh, she's very special to me because I, I did a show, uh, uh, the Carol Burnett show, and I had to sing on that show, and, and I was scared to death. And uh, I wanted to record the song about three in the morning when no one was around. And uh, the band was there and nobody else was around. And I, I did the song uh, on the first take because it, it, uh, it wasn't going to get any better. And uh, I looked up in the booth and uh, Nanny was there. And she had stayed around all day long just to kind of help me through the song. And, uh, She's just a really special lady. Would you please welcome Nanette Fabre? Well, you're a very special person. Thank you. You fool around? Uh, so soon. <laughs> <laughs> you, have, you know, you have one of the longest uh, marriages and in, in, uh, longest lasting marriages in Hollywood, really, don't you? I mean, is on that, record. Is that counting the practicing, you mean? Counting the practicing, yes. <laughs> I probably do. Yes. Six, 16, 16 years. 16 years. To the same man. That's a long time. That is a long time. How Randy you, McDougall. Randy? Darling fellow. How did, you, how did you meet Randy? Oh, good question. I'm glad you asked me that. Well... Ran and I were in New York, but not together. He was uh, uh, casting a picture. He'd just written a picture for Bing Crosby. And um, he was there, you know, doing some of the other locations and things. And I was in town, and uh, we had the same business manager. And he got on the phone when I was talking to my business manager, and he said, uh, hi, Nan. I said, hi. And I thought he was still married. I didn't know he was divorced. And he said, uh, how'd you like to have lunch? And I guess, I guess he could feel that kind of sticky silence that happens when you're, when he knows he's bombed, you know. Mm. Yeah, how do you, how do you, you know, having lunch is not a great line. No, no, you know, no. and, but he said, I don't know if you know, but I'm divorced. And at that minute, Bird, I knew he was the one. Really? I knew he was the one. <laughs> but you know what happened? We had lunch and it became dinner. We were both doing shows. I was doing a, a special and he was doing his picture. We had lunch, we had dinner. And then we had, show, had the show, and then uh, it went on from there. But what about, uh, you know, because you worked with a, a lot of men uh, in 16 uh, how do you mean years. That? Well, I mean, you know, in, in acting. You know, oh, in, oh, all right. Jobs okay. and things. Yeah. How do you handle when a guy takes a run at you, you know? Takes a run at me. Well, that's what to how do I, what? I, I mean, if he makes a pass, that's what I say. Makes a passage. Oh, you mean if he wants to jump on my bones? Jump. Oh! <laughs> Yeah. In my time, they said, just make a pass at you. Yes. Well, <laughs> <laughs> I didn't mean to tell right. you. That's all right. Well, you know, it's a very funny thing, Bert. Uh, since I've been married, I haven't been aware that people have been making passes at me. And I asked Randy about that because I said, gee, I, I feel sexy and darling. And, and, but I'm never aware that anybody ever seems to be making a pass at me. Why is that? Mm. And he said, thank you, dear. <laughs> And he said, well, Nan, he says, you know, uh, he says, you know, fellas can tell. <laughs> he, said, he said, fellas can tell when, when girls have their radar out. <laughs> he said, fellas know when girls are, are ready to have a pass made at them. And he says, the trouble with you, Nan, he says, you aren't putting your radar out anymore. <laughs> You're not going to top that in the improvs, you know that, don't you? <laughs> you know, right now, there's a lot of uh, people going to uh, places and having operations. You know, yeah. men going and having operations and coming back as ladies. And uh, I was thinking, what would happen if a, if a guy was walking, or he's in a bar, say, and, uh, and uh, he sees a, 
Well, you, you just in the bar. Am I the? Am I? We, you're you're the guy in the. We bar know each other, but bar. I don't okay. know that. Right, right. You're, you know. Right. Hey, have another well, drink there. Ha! Hey, Bert, don't you remember me? No, well, I. I never forget a body. <laughs> oh, don't yeah. you remember room six twelve? We were swimming. We went swimming nude. The locker room, the shower, you and me. Hey, Bert. I don't think you remember who I am. Let me think now. Were we in high school together? No, it was college. College? Yeah, we were roomies, don't you remember? Roomies? 612? Yeah. You're not... I used to fix your iced tea all the time with lots of sugar. Harvey. No, no, Bobby, my name is Bobby. You're Bobby Smidlap. Yeah, right. God, Bobby. What's happened to you, Bobby? <laughs> Incredible, Bobby. Well, I went to Denmark. Well, you can't forget they... those good old days. These... I used to put the Miracle Whip on the bologna. I mean, you know, I, Bobby, I mean, they really moved things around, didn't they? Yes, they did a few little things. They did a hell of a job on you, Bob. Oh, thanks, Bert. God, it's... I know you're going to think this is weird, but... Yes? Well, you used to make me wonder anyway. <laughs> Thank you to the next guy, Wow. Well, I was trying to figure out some ladies to have on the show. There was one uh, lady that I had worked with a couple of times, and uh, I, I really wanted to work with her again. And she's one of the most sought-after talk show guests in the business. And the reason is, is because she's gangbusters. Uh, she's a very funny lady, a terrific singer, and not only that, she's got a great bod. Here's J.P. Moore. Ah 
seat. Mm. Would you like a love seat? Yes, I would. Well, then let's... I picked this for us. I, uh, I wanted you to be on the show very much because uh, I, I not then only... look think, at me. I think you're a very sexy lady. Do you? Yeah. Then why don't you look at me more? Because it's uh, difficult for me to look at sexy ladies. I'm very bashful. Basically. I know you are. I can see that. I know you're a very shy person. You do know that, don't you? Of course I do. How do you size up a man? So quickly. <laughs> <laughs> how do I size up a man? I mean, when you see a man, how do you sort of, you, you know, mean, visualize what size him? do I like? No. No, I mean, how do you make up your mind whether you like him or not? By looking in his eyes or by sure. listening to him? Or? Sure. I can tell exactly what you're thinking by looking in your eyes. Oh, really? You're filthy, you know that. <laughs> yes, I do. I knew that. Yes. What else can you do? Anything else? Any nice things? Oh, yes, I can see all the good things about you. You're also very sweet, very gentle, very nice, and you're a pain in the... <laughs> What's your uh, ideal man like? Well, let's see. Great eyes, good hmm. sense of humor. A good sense of humor can capture my heart and the rest of my body. <laughs> He'd lap you right into the sack, huh? <laughs> mm. Lap me right off. <laughs> oh, lap you right off. Have you, have you ever met him? No. No? No, I haven't. Oh. And if you do, then it'll be, that'll be it for the rest of your life. No, it won't be. I'll never be married. Never, ever be married? I've been married three times. Three biggies. Well, well three medium size. Three medium. <laughs> <laughs> Would you like to, uh, you Absolutely like do... not. You don't want to do any improv? Right? Absolutely not. No, I'll do them with you. I don't know how good they are. How about uh, two people in a nudist camp for the first time? Okay. Okay? Yes. Well, we finally made it. Yeah. <laughs> Gee, I wish I could do that. <laughs> I just, I can't do that. I, uh... I feel self-conscious out here. I know. I don't feel at all self-conscious. This is the way I want to live. I've been telling you for years this is the way we should live. Free, open, naked. I know, but I don't, I just don't think I can do it. Well, I, I guess I could do it, as, as all the other people around here are, are nude, aren't they? Right. You can do that it. That guy over there is certainly nude. He's carrying his hat. <laughs> a funny place to carry your hat. And look, no hands. Yeah. <laughs> Would you please take J.P. Morgan, and uh, when we get this pared down, she'll be on about eight seconds. 